I'm going to give you a couple quick pointers on coloring your line work. I'm using my Mestiza line work that I created in a previous video. So I use the lasso tool to, um, to just do the flat colors. I'm just going to show this really quick because you can do it with the pen tool. You can do the lasso tool. The main thing, um, now I'm cleaning it up, the main thing is keep all your colors um, that are touching each other or all your different colors on separate layers. That gives you a lot more flexibility with um, changing the colors, replace, you know, because I think I, this is like a way orange color and I just replace the whole thing later because it's on a layer by itself. So you can just do that and just do a fill over what you've already done. Um, so I'm just going to show you, you know, that's the finished all flatted out on different layers. Now I want to talk about blending for a second. So what I use normally is this much tool and this is what I'm showing you right now. This is um, a 39 pixel dry brush. It's in your natural brushes collection and I go um, side to side. Uh, in the direction that the skin is or whatever I'm blending and then come back and go over it in the opposite direction and I find that that gives you a really smooth blend with the sponge tool and it's my favorite way to do it but I wanted to show you guys some options um, because it, you know it might not using two tools might not float everyone's boat so I'm using the flat round and now I'm going to show you the blur tool which um, I found that find that a lot of people use when they're first starting out. I think it sucks. That was the blur tool, and now I'm gonna lasso it and show you what um, happens when you go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Um, that's the Photoshop filter. You can change the radius right now, and it'll change the level of the blur. Again, I find that it's it's kind of an amateurish move. I would stick to you get a lot more texture from other methods. You can also use the brush tool like an airbrush in CS4. You have the option of controlling the opacity and flow and the airbrush is in a separate button and some earlier versions of Photoshop there is an airbrush button. So I'm using it at an opacity of 50% with a flow of 50% and I just keep going switching colors. You um, you hit the X key it'll toggle your colors back and forth so I'm just switching back and forth and going over them and I'm going to grab um, go down oh, to an opacity of about 30 and just go over it with one of the colors to just blend it together. That's obviously preferable to the brush tool or to the um, blur tool, but I still prefer the texture of the smudge. And now another favorite of mine, the palette knife brush from the Adonis collection that I like always use. It's great for blending. This is a little way to, to blend with the brush that gives you a little more texture. I'm setting my opacity at 50% and leaving my flow at 50. Again, you know, these are just what I'm comfortable with. You can use any setting. So you'll notice um, the color kind of builds on itself as it's kind of like what happens when you use the multiply. When you go over it, it gets darker. So now I'm doing a lighter color right next to it. And I'm just going to start overlapping the two of them together. And um, if you switch up your pin pressure, if you if you've got a, you know a tablet that's uh, got pressure sensitivity, if you just on this blending phase, if you just start kind of just sweeping over it very lightly, switching colors back and forth, um, and just you know moving back and forth with your colors, you get a nice texture blend. So of the options, the smudge tool is obviously my favorite, followed up by um, the blending the palette knife tool. As far as texture goes, I like the palette knife blend, but ease of use, I really find that the, the smudge tool gives me more control. So back to actually um, coloring the piece. I'm just gonna show you guys how I use some of that blending on the face, and then we'll do a close up of the eye. Like I said in my other video, my computer was just like shitting itself because I was trying to do a lot of stuff at once and I was on a deadline for this commission, so I stopped recording after I did the eye. But I figure there's a pretty decent lesson in here somewhere. So right now I'm using that palette knife tool to just lay out some um, some shadow colors. And then I'm going to go in with the um, smudge tool, like I just showed you guys, and I'm going to blend those things out. Um, it's really nice if you do like a fast swooping motion with the palette knife tool. You kind of, kind of sometimes get a really cool effect at the end. So I'm just playing around with like um, my pen pressure and uh, just the kind of strokes that I'm using. Um, so now I'm going to grab the smudge tool and start doing just like I said, you, you pull back and, you know, you pull it out back and forth in the direction that you want the blend to happen. And then right now I'm going back over in the opposite, di opposite direction to just really smooth it out. Um, I wasn't working with a lot of harsh shadows on this one because they uh, kind of like to have in your face have kind of like a soft shading. So, um, you know. So I just kept it pretty soft. Now I'm going in, adding it to the highlights, and just grabbing that smudge tool again, and just blending it all together. So keep blending. Um, 
keyboard short, I try not to use too many shortcuts while I'm doing these videos, just so that you can see me switching up the, the tools, but I can't really help myself. So I use this shortcut, shortcut of the to toggle to the brush tool. If you want to move your, um, your canvas around while you're working with it without switching tools, you um, just hold down the space bar and you get the hand tool and you can move things around. Um, if you hit the left bracket, you make your brush smaller. If you hit the right bracket, you make it larger. Any of the numbers um, will change the opacity. So like if you hit five, you would change your opacity to 50%. If you hit seven, it'd change it to 70. If you hit one zero, it would change it to 100. So those are just quick ways to, you know, toggle between the different opacities to change up the brush um, size and all that stuff. There are a lot of really good downloads of um, Photoshop shortcuts that you can get and I really recommend you know, like not memorizing it but at least becoming familiar with that because it really um, you know improves your your speed that you can work at if you're not constantly going back to your toolbar to grab a different brush or just switch up your brush size it, it you know it makes things a lot easier on you um, and they they have those for Mac or PC or whatever and now I'm just gonna uh, on another layer just in case I screw up add in the whites for the eyes and like I said, I just changed that color just by doing a fill on that layer because since it was separate, you know, you have the option to do that. And you're going to preserve the transparency. And now I'm adding in, you know, the shadows of the eyes. Um, I usually use like a clay kind of taupey color and with, with white to, to just kind of balance it out. And then I'm, you know, doing the, the corners of the eyes, adding a little pink. I'm going to tone this color down with um, using a multiply and, you know, making it a little darker. So it's like, whoa, it's really pink. but you know, it, it works out in the end. And now I'm, I'm going to add the iris color. Again, um, I think I might have left this one on the same layer just because you know, I wasn't really going with the really complicated eye here because you're going to be really zoomed out, so I just did it all in one. And now I'm just using the multiply tool. You can either pick another color, do multiply, you know, color burn, whatever you're most dark in, whatever you're most comfortable with, and just adding in the pupil. Um, you have to be really careful with pupil placement and size, try to get them as close as possible with the stats. What can make your eye look really wonky, you know, that they're looking in one direction, you know, and the other eyes looking in another, so you really want to pay attention to where you put those pupil. Now I'm just going to add um, a little shine, and again, that's another thing that can, you know, make sure that it's coming from the same direction, same light source. Now to brighten it up and give the eyes a luminous appearance, I'm using the color dodge setting on the brush tool. That basically saturates, it lightens and saturates whatever color you're using. So I like that it, you know, when you're doing it on top of brown, it gives it like a nice orangey kind of fire sort of look to it. Now I'm putting on her makeup. I'm using um, a brush that is a pretty low opacity and I'm just kind of, she's got like a smoky eye going on here. So I'm just, you know, smoking it out a lot. It's not really a huge focal point right now, you know, but it's one of those things that just kind of adds to the appearance. This is the makeup that she was wearing in the reference photo that they wanted to use, so I'm trying to emulate that as much as possible. And now I'm smudging it out so it doesn't look like she got socked in the eye. Um, but, you know, you see that that, that dodge tool really uh, makes her eye look like it's glowing, it kind of gives it like, like a nice reflective quality. So now I'm using the screen for the highlights of the brow and a little bit in the corner of the eye and just kind of darkening those eyelashes. And then the second, um, she had kind of like a glittery eyeshadow and glitter is kind of funny sometimes. Like you don't want to uh, go too little with makeup when you're doing a picture because sometimes it can really look funny. But for this, um, I'm about to grab one of the natural media uh, spattered brushes right here. I think I go with, uh, what is that? I think it's like a 59 splatter brush or something like that. And I'm gonna grab that lighter highlight color um, and I'm gonna set my, my brush to screen and I'm just clicking on top of that darker color to just kind of give it like a look of glitter. It's really hard to tell, um, especially when you're zoomed out and especially with the quality of the video, but it actually made a pretty decent effect. So, you know, that's basically it. That's the eye and the eye makeup. Um, you know, you can check out the finished product and see, you know, how I finished it up on my uh, website, chrismickins.com or my DeviantArt page. And thanks very much. I hope you learned something.